Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. This section is section 11.4, uh, the tangent. And so tangent is one of those weird things. So if you have an angle A, then the tangent is defined as the sine of that angle divided by the cosine of that angle. Of course, we have 0 is less than equal to A, is less than 2 pi because we're dealing radians, not in degrees anymore. And indeed, this works for all values, all real numbers where we can say that x is equal to 2 pi times some integer plus that angle a that lies between that range there, right? And so this obviously works as long as cosine of a is not equal to 0. So if cosine of a is equal to 0, then we say the tangent of a is undefined. Okay. And you'll see what that means later. All right, why do we call it the tangent? Well, if you take the coordinate axes and you draw an angle here, theta, and you note that the position a comma b there, which is this cosine of theta and the sine of theta, then the, the, the slope of this angle, the slope of this line, is equal to the rise over the run, which is the same as the sine of that theta divided by the cosine of that theta. And the reason why the, the tangent is not defined when theta is when cosine theta it, the cosine of that angle is zero is because we're talking about a vertical slope right and that slope is undefined because the run is zero. There's not really much more to say about tangent. Um, there's probably some interesting angles that we want to think about. So let's write down some angles. So when theta is zero, tangent of theta is also zero because sine is zero of that. Then we have theta of pi over 6. Well, in this case, sine would be uh, 1 half, and cosine would be root of 3 over 2. So we're going to get 1 over root of 3, which we can rewrite as root of 3 over 3. Okay? And when pi over 2, then the, the slope is 1, because sine and cosine are equal to each other. Now, this is pi over 4, I'm sorry. And then we have pi over 3. Well, now we have root of 3 over 1, right? And then when we have pi over 2, that's going to be undefined because cosine of pi over 2 is actually 0, so we can't divide by 0 and we can't have that. Uh, some identities that are pretty easy to tell. What if we have tangent of minus x? Well, that's the same as sine of minus x all over cosine of minus x, which is minus sine of x all over cosine of x, which is just minus tangent of x. So tangent of minus x is equal to minus tangent of x. That's pretty simple. Um, we don't really have much else to talk about it except we can graph what, what tangent will look like. This is a fairly weird graph. I'm going to sketch it out. You're going to have to go online if you want to see a perfect graph. So at 0, this is going to be tangent of theta, and this is going to be theta. At theta equals 0, tangent of theta is 0. And then when we get to pi over 2, it becomes undefined. And we get pi, it's going to be 0 again. And we get 3 pi over 2, it's going to be undefined again. And with a negative pi over 2, we have negative pi, and we have negative 3 pi over 2. Okay. And what tangent does is it kind of it kind of flattens out here and then it shoots up, and then it kind of reaches an asymptote at this thing. And then at that point, it comes up and it shoots up levels off and then it shoots up again, like this. And this is what tangent of theta does. This is going to be 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. And this also goes down, and then we start up here, and it comes down, it flattens out, and then it goes down, and it does the same thing over here. This is going to be minus 2 pi, okay? That's basically what tangent does, and that's why you can see that at these particular values it's undefined. So at pi over 2, it's either positive infinity or negative infinity. You can't tell which. Same thing for 3 pi over 2. And minus pi over 2. And minus 3 pi over 2. Uh, what do we use tangent for? Well, we have these problems, right? So suppose we want to determine the height of a tower without climbing the tower. So we are standing here at point P. We see that the tower is a distance A away. And then we have the tower of a certain height, right? The height is y. 
and we don't want to climb the tower. So we look at the angle theta here, and then we note that tangent of theta is going to be the height y divided by a. Okay, So we can calculate what tangent of theta should be, and then we divide by a, we multiply by a by that number, so we have a times tangent of theta will actually get us the height y. Pretty easy. So in, in this case, let's say that we had the angle here pi over 3, then we know that tangent of pi over 3 is root of 3, so we have a times root of 3 equals the height y. Right? So whatever a is, if a is like 100 meters, so we had 100 meters times root of 3, so the height y is just 100 root of 3 meters. That's all it is. Again, not really much to talk about there. It's very simple. Uh, I kind of wonder why he separated it in a separate chapter. I understand why he might want to do that. There's a ton of problems. Uh, these problems um, introduce the cotangent. It also introduces secant and cosecant. Okay, so cotangent of the angle x is going to be 1 over the tangent of x, which is just cosine of x over sine of x. It has a special different kind of property. There's a relationship between sine and cosine. I'm sorry, cotangent and tangent. We also define secant of x to be 1 over cos cosine of x, and we define the cosecant of x as 1 over sine of x. And this is not at all confusing. Okay, I'm sorry, this is not cos, this is CSC. Okay, and this is confusing. I was being sarcastic. This is very confusing. Uh, typically, we don't use these. We just use the relationships here, but sometimes you'll see in books they do use them because they are useful. They are used sometimes, um, but we typically don't. We go back to sine and cosine and tangent, and that's all we use. And uh, there isn't much more to talk about besides that. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this section. Enjoy the homework problems. Take your time. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can find the series on the left, and on the right you can click to support my channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.